Good morning. It is June the 28th, 2017, and guess what's coming up on Friday? End of the quarter, end of the week, end of the month. And with that in mind, that probably is going to support equities, if not today, um, starting tomorrow. We'll rally in, so uh, we'll have to keep that in mind. Uh, don't be surprised if equities rally in spite of what Fisher said and what Yellen said yesterday. And if that is the case, that could add to the selling in Treasuries. Let's get, get off with our usual disclaimer. Hypothetical or simulated performance results have certain limitations. Unlike an actual performance record, simulator results do not represent actual trading. Also, since the trades have not been executed, the results may have under overcompensated for the impact of any of certain market factors, such as lack of liquidity. Simulated trading programs in general are also subject to the fact that they are designed with the benefit of hindsight. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profit or losses similar to those shown. As usual, it's a mouthful. Okay, the biggest thing impacting Treasury today is going to be the seven-year auction. Uh, very little news overnight. Um, gosh, Draghi, Bank of Japan, Bank of England, People's Bank of China um, I, um, were highlighted on uh, Forex as uh, saying something at 8.30 or 9.30 Eastern. So we could have some impact from that. But today's news is international trade, minus 66B. No one will pay any attention to it. Pending home sales plus a half a percent. That's probably the big news item today. And crude oil, minus 2.1. Last night, the APIs built 0.85 million in crude. Gasoline, plus 1.35 in the height of driving season right here. Driving season is, historically has peaked on July the 4th, plus 700,000 barrels in distillates. So this number is more supportive than that number. There were articles out overnight about how the uh, ultimatum given by the uh, Gulf states to Qatar um, is taking relationships to all new time lows. So um, the Persian Gulf states, the Persian Gulf is where uh, a lot of the world's oil supply comes from. So anything that impacts the Persian oil gulf could take crude quickly higher. So that's where we face right now today. So my guess is that sometime today the dealers will have to support the market. There's a good chance we've seen the low. We are dealing with a B. Uh, we do have resistance starting at uh, 2604, 2605. Um, I think there's probably one short left in the market. So this morning we're looking to see three sell threes to seven, 11 to 15. On the buy side, 25 to 29. And not afraid to buy it because of the seven year auction. And then uh, 17 to 21 for buy two. Knob spread has come in quite a bit the last couple of days. We were flirting with 30 two days ago. Now we're in the mid-28s. So the market has been under pressure during this auction cycle. Looking at the 30-year. Okay, number one resistance, uh, we're at 28, so the buck to 04. Somebody's going to sell 31s. Uh, we'll try to sell 7s to 11s, pick up this area right here. And then 15 to 19. On the buy side, pretty good support, 20 to 24, number one. 13 to 17, buy one. And five to nine by two, based on the fact that they won't let the bottom fall out of the market today, or they usually won't let the bottom fall out of the markets today if they get to move the paper they need to move. 
Now, back before 2009, uh, the dealers had significant risk. And we uh, would see selling hedges come in weak auctions that would last for several days. But now, uh, dealers get to bring the paper in. If they can't sell it, they give it back to the Fed. Um, they've got it put in place. Uh, so, can't lose money. And that's changed the dynamics of the auction. Have to know how to handle and work the auctions because six days a month, uh, we have to deal with an auction. Okay, 54, 56, uh, sell one in gold. 58 to 60, sell two. Goldman went bullish on gold two days ago. That is a factor. Um, 48 to 50, buy one. And 45, 47, buy two. I uh, heard no more about the uh, warning that was sent out to Assad about you better not uh, be planning um, another chemical strike. Um, some of the talk yesterday was the United States was prepared to do a preemptive strike if they saw them doing anything to uh, gas the jets, move the uh, bombs, uh, etc. Uh, there are stories out there, prominently by Seymour Hersh, who's probably one of the biggest conspiratorial writers there are out there. He always comes up with something sensational. Most of the time it turns out not to be true. But he's probably the lead name talking about how Syria did not attack Syrians with poisonous gas. Okay, the Euro. Continued its rally, made uh, new highs. So we got up to 35, and we had 25 to 35 was our number two sell. We're there uh, as it stands right now. So. Um, We'll make 30 to 35, 30 to 40, sell one. 50 to 60, sell two. Um, there is some announcement or something was highlighted on Forex News coming. I think it's 8.30 Eastern by the major, the world's major banks spokesman. So I don't know what that is. Okay, 114 even, 114.10 by one. And then 1375 by two. Now, if you don't believe fundamentals affect the news, one speech by Draghi has taken us from the mid 112s to 114 plus. And uh, my point is, is that you really can't ignore fundamentals. On a day to day basis, they quite often don't mean very much. But eventually and ultimately, they are what drive the market. So you have to be cognizant of those and pay attention. And eventually, they will impact your markets and the trading. Okay, crude oil's in a tight range right here. So, um, Gosh, probably a seller, 44 and a quarter, 44.50. We'll keep the same numbers we had last night, 44.75, 45. Uh, the, a, the EIA numbers are forecast to show a draw. That would be supportive. We're dealing with a P here. We're looking for a 30 to 40 tick range before the news hits. So probably spend more time with gold this morning than we will with crude. On the buy side, 43.75, 43.50 by one. 43 even, 43 and a quarter by two.
Okay, what's the E-mini going to do? Yesterday, Fisher, or maybe it was two days ago, said that stocks were overvalued and interest rates were going to go higher and the stock market could, the U.S. economy could absorb a sell-off in the stock market. Yesterday, Yellen came up and said stocks looked overvalued to her. Um, and uh, she added a little fuel to the fire. So right here is the break in the market. Um, Looks like at about 217, 24.17, 24.18. We can see right here that we've got it. Now, what a lot of people really don't appreciate, most people think that you cure overvalued situations or overbought situations by a sharp sell off. And I certainly believe that for years. But quite often, you're going to wait, you know, futures are futures. They're six to nine months out. So earnings per share can catch up. If Trump can get the taxes, maybe not personally, but taxes on business lowered, if he can get the rules and regulations lowered, And he's doing a lot of that, where he can by executive order. Um, then the economy has a chance to grow. And it usually takes 15 to 18 months to really start seeing the effects of this. But there's hardly a day that goes by that we don't see that somebody else is going to spend a billion dollars, half, 500 million bucks. 3 billion bucks, 10 billion bucks building a new plant in the United States. I looked at the um, commitment to the energy and petrochemical um, plants being built in the United States uh, over the last year. Um, over $100 billion. Uh, and I think it's probably actually higher than that. Um, have, have been spent and committed to that because of the shale oil production uh, for crude and natural gas so a lot of stuff is happening but I, I mean even uh, Apple has said that they're gonna build a plant in the United States uh, with the name Wisconsin mentioned so there's a lot of stuff happening right now that could make the overvalued situation slowly disappear over time so my point is is that you don't have to break the market you can move sideways to absorb overbought, overvalued conditions. Cleanest break in the market is 17 to 18. Looking at the F2 screen, uh, resistance is at 25. So I've got this high right here at 26. I've got that high right there at 27. Uh, so 25, 27 is resistance. First sell is 24, 26. I've got this last rotate up yesterday afternoon, stopped at 31. Second sell is 29 to 31. And probably the biggest um, thing affecting the market is 6.30. In the week, end of month, end of quarter. And there's not a lot of incentive for the uh, big money managers to get out there and spend. So if we don't see the buying today, I think there's one short left in the market. Probably a pretty good chance that the low is in. Um, then Thursday, definitely Friday, we should uh, have a shot at higher prices just because of the quarter. Uh, 15 to 17, buy one. Buy two, 10 to 12. Let them get stops below the overnight session low, then bring it back after that. No major news to talk about. Uh, international trade deficit minus 66 billion. Pending home sales up a half a percent. Crude inventory is expected to draw 2.1 million barrels. I'm going to take a bit to get everything up and posted. I'm going to get busy on that. I will be back with you as soon as possible.